has been 11 days since their last games. Tonight, Temple and South Carolina are back on the court. After playing the Gamecocks close in Philly last season, the Owls are back at Colonial Life Arena in Columbia to take on fifth-ranked South Carolina. Welcome, everyone. Eric Fried and Christy Thomas Scuddy with you this evening for a unique matchup because it's only the sixth meeting all time. But there is history. For three seasons, Dawn Staley and Tanya Cardoza were teammates at the University of Virginia. They made it to the national title game in 1991. They were both named all Final Four team. Dawn was the most outstanding player of the Final Four that year. Once teammates, now rivals. Staley set to coach South Carolina against Cardoza and the team Dawn used to coach, Temple. Let's start with South Carolina, Christy, coming off a win over Iowa State. Pretty good bounce back after that loss at home to NC State. Well, Don Staley made her frustration known post-game after NC State, and Zaya Cook answered the bell. She struggled from the field against NC State, only going four for 18. But against Iowa State, she let the offense come to her. She slowed down. She took what the defense get her, gave her. She finished four six from three, and she led this Gamecock offense to a, to a W. On the season 11 of 22 from outside the three-point line, you see the change from the loss to the win for Cook and South Carolina. Temple led by preseason co-player of the year in the American, Mia Davis. She's put up big numbers in the early going this season. Mia Davis has been missing everything for Temple in their first two games. They are moving her around in space, giving her open shots, allowing her to take it off the bounce. But Eric, for Temple to have success tonight, Mia Davis has to get supporting help from her teammates from this young team as Davis, the senior from Baltimore, set to go against the fifth-ranked team in the country, South Carolina. Four and one on the season. Temple has played two games. They lost to Villanova and they lost to Florida Gulf Coast. We are ready. Temple in the road black with the cherry and white. South Carolina in the home whites. And the opening tip is still up for grabs down on the deck and we're going to do it again. So Zaya Cook and South Carolina will get around the circle again. Again, another battle for the tip, but finally controlled by Temple. Davis threw it in the corner and was tipped out of bounds. Temple has had trouble taking care of the basketball. 17 turnovers on average for their first two games. They turned it over 20 times against Florida Gulf Coast, and that's really a big concern for Tanya Cardoza because if you turn it over against South Carolina, they are going to run out and run out quickly the other way. Well, South Carolina coming tonight is averaging 21 fast break points, and a lot of that is turning the defense over. And Tanya Gardoza was honest with us. They were up 10 at Florida Gulf Coast. They turned the ball over. That led to 14 easy buckets, which was really the difference in that loss. Davis can take it to the outside. Won't get that to go. Rebound for Leticia Mihir, the sophomore from Canada, who gets her first start. You see the rest of the starting five with Zaya Cook, Destiny Henderson, Aaliyah Boston, Bree Beal, along with Mihir. They feed it into the post to Aaliyah Boston and a tie up jump ball and possession arrow. We'll give it to Temple. And that is one thing that South Carolina has to be ready for is the double come from Temple. They're so small, they're going to swarm the paint to try to get the, try to make the Gamecocks kick it out. Temple starting five, as we mentioned, very young. Davis, the senior, been a fixture in this Temple lineup. Alexander, the sophomore, tries it from the outside. A second chance here. This is something that Mia Davis does very well. Gets on the offensive glass, can't get it to go. But a couple of free throws coming up for the senior. One thing about Davis is her points don't just come through the traditional offense. She is constantly moving. She knows when shots go up. The trajectory of rebounds, as we saw just then, she was able to position herself on the weak side to get that second chance opportunity. Freshman Jason Clinton also in the starting lineup. Imani Mayo is a senior. Alexa Williamson is a junior. As Temple has the game's first point, Davis makes a couple. South Carolina has won all five of the previous meetings, but as I mentioned, it was close last time around. 
in Philadelphia at McGonagall Hall. Closest in the series, in fact, seven ties, nine lead changes in that game. Davis had a double-double, 14 and 13, and South Carolina was led by someone who is not on the court today, Ty Harris with 21 points and seven assists. And me here with the first field goal of the game. Eric, she's just so explosive off the bounce. She's gotten rid of the brace that she wore last year, and you can just see how much more explosive as well as confident she is. Knocking down the three for Temple to make it 5-2. Three Beal, and work it inside to Boston for an easy two. And that's Boston just showing numbers, so strong, snatches that ball of the air, and then because the defender went for the steal, had an easy two-point scoring opportunity. Back out for Alexander. Temple after a couple of free throws and a Clinton three-pointer with the early lead on the road. Clinton runs into a roadblock from a me here and a turnover, and here's Henderson. Corner three is good. Zaya Cook for three. And so, Eric, if you're a Temple fan, there's two things you want to pay attention to tonight. The turnovers, but also the three ball. A lot of three-point opportunities that are missed lead to run out as we see the game pucks out and transition again. And this is what we talked about. Temple has to take care of the basketball because South Carolina came back with a three-on-one, but they could not finish. And that'll be a traveling violation. We said things for Temple to keep an eye on. How about things for all of us to keep an eye on for Christie's Keys here tonight? Well, we're going to focus on the underdog in this situation in Temple, and that is can Davis get scoring support from the rest of the team? So far in the season, she has been lights out, averaging 28 points. But the biggest part is can Temple make South Carolina have to score the hard way? And what do I mean by that? Can they make them have to execute in the half court by taking care of the ball? And can they make South Carolina beat them from deep versus scoring in the paint? Whereas to this point in the season, South Carolina has been feasting with almost 42 points a game. Zaya Cook's got a great handle, showed it off a little bit there, got to the rim and drew the contact. She'll go to the line to shoot a couple. See Dawn Staley, you see that hooded sweatshirt. When we get to our first time out, when we come back from it, we'll tell you the story behind that hoodie. Because as we know, I mean, Dawn, she always puts great thought into what she wears on game day. And the people are like, wait a minute, Dawn Staley's wearing a hoodie today? But this is a very special hoodie that we'll tell you all about in a minute. Fashionista is the term I think you're looking for to that partner to describe Dawn. South Carolina coming down, showing that 1-3-1 one one zone offense now, or zone defense. One thing Tanya Cardoza said, she encouraged her team. She said, you have the green light, and they have to just be told over and over, shoot the ball, shoot the ball. Well, we've seen a couple of confident strokes from the outside here to bring Temple within one. Mayo with that three. Boston's been trying to extend her range since the end of last season. That won't drop. And it's one and done for the Gamecocks. Good feed inside. So after three straight trips where Temple had turned the ball over, they come back with a three, and then they go inside to Alexa Williamson to get the lead back. Well, I've got to tell you, you can tell that Temple just needed time to practice. Tanya Cardoza told us they had a lot of stoppages due to COVID. And with this young team, she just needed time to practice. And we're seeing that in terms of the offensive execution already here early tonight. Young team, and another thing too, Christy, not a very deep team, only dressing eight here tonight, so they're going to have to defend without fouling here to hang tough with this fifth-ranked team in the country. Shot clock inside of 10 now is Clinton. Drives on Destiny Henderson, but you're not going to get around to Leah Boston. Well, Eric, I said that Temple's already looked better on offense. They've been patient. They've swung the ball around, getting the wide open three to go. And then in transition, they hit the post player streaking down as Williamson shows her numbers for the easy two off the glass. And a shot clock violation turnover for Temple. That is number four for the Owls. 
But, Eric, at least that's going to be a dead ball turnover for them, which allows Temple to get back and get solid on defense in the half court. Cook finds Beal on the outside. She knocks down the three. Bree Beal, just three of six from outside the three-point line heading into this game. She's on the stat sheet with her first points tonight to put South Carolina back in front. Well, it's been a point of emphasis for Beal to improve her offensive game. Last year was known as that defensive stopper to do, would do anything to help her team win. This year she's a lot more balanced on both sides of the floor. That won't drop. There's Mia Davis on the offensive glass. Davis couldn't get it. The follow-up is off the mark. Boston there defensively again, and here comes South Carolina. Cook pulls up for two. No one stops ball, and Cook's allowed to get two feet in the paint for that pull-up jumper. Temple must stop ball sooner if they're going to try to slow South Carolina down. Both teams. Two of three from outside the three-point line, but the difference so far is... South Carolina overall shooting 56% from the field. Temple at 33%. And contact there. That will be a trip to the free throw line for Temple's Williamson when we return to Columbia. Bree Bill on the cookout. All the defense sucked in. Bree Bill's allowed to get her feet set. And this nothing but the bottom of the net. Well, we know the success that Dawn Staley's had at South Carolina. She had great success as Temple's head coach. Eight seasons, two-time Atlantic 10 Coach of the Year. They won four A-10 tourney titles. And Khadija Bowens, class of 2006, was in the middle of things. And we showed you the hoodies before, and you can see the masks. It's in support of this former Temple player who played for Dawn. She was diagnosed with ovarian cancer in August. If you plug the coordinates into your favorite Maps app that you see on the sweatshirt, it takes you to North Philadelphia where Khadijah Bowens was brought up. And according to Dawn, she said she's from North Philly. She's a fighter, so proud of her. There's the mask that has the special logo. Proud of her teammates. They have donated money, time. They've made meals for Khadijah. She battles against cancer. And so they're just trying to let her know that they're thinking of her and doing what they can to support her right here. But when you hear someone's from North Philly, you know there's a little toughness right there. So we know Khadijah's pretty tough. And stylish, by the way, too. <laughs> it's a beautiful tribute that her former coach is doing for her. And uh, hats off to Don Stanley. Hats off to Khadija Bowen, who's just fighting. And that's what Don just kept saying when we talked to her yesterday. She is a fighter. She is fighting every day to overcome this ovarian cancer, going through chemo since August. A and my heart goes out to Khadija and her family. But hey, North Phillies know how to fight. So uh, my money's <laughs> on Khadija. So our first media timeout, Temple has missed their last four field goal attempts, haven't scored in a little over two minutes. And again, the turnovers are going to be the big story. Four turnovers for Temple so far. South Carolina scored eight of their 14 points off of those turnovers. Second one coming for the junior from the Pittsburgh area. Kasha Yuso, freshman from West Palm Beach, has come on for Temple. Where if you see the Lee sagging Grissett man. And Victoria Saxton as well. Sorry, Christy. Oh, I was going to say, you just see the sagging man of Temple. They're undersized. They're just trying to play off and dare South Carolina to take those quick shots from the outside versus trying to feed it down low to the post. There you see Saxton into the game. And I mentioned Lily Grissett. She did not play against Iowa State. She had a head injury, but back on the floor here tonight. And here she is out top on the D. It's a versatile Lily Grisette. Don Staley saying she could play positions one through four for her, and she has to this point in the season. The lone senior on the roster. Knocked away by Grisette. Shot clock winding down. On the run, that will drop for Mayo. Imani Mayo, the senior from Georgia, who's averaging eight points a game so far through the first couple of games this season. She's got five tonight. Last year, she averaged a little more than two points a game. So good start to her final year in Philadelphia. Boston 
No. Grab by Davis. Now Temple does want to run. Uh, Tanya Cardoza wants this to be a team that plays fast, and she thinks this is a team that when they have that practice time, when they have that rhythm, that that's when they're going to be at their best, when they're playing fast and getting out in transition. Well, Eric, we've seen it throughout the country. Most teams' defenses have been slow because of the limited practice time coming into the season. But also, when you have a young team, your defense is going to lag behind. She talked about the lack of communication by the young players on the floor. And she believes when our defense gets better, we're going to be better because we can get out and run consistently and have those easy scoring opportunities. Turnover for South Carolina, their second. Davis, that's what she's been doing for four years. Off balance, drive to the basket. Co-player of the year in the preseason in the American with Amari, Amari Thomas from Cincinnati. Well, Tanya Cardoza told 14. us. She told us that the plan was to move Davis to the perimeter this season, but then due to some injuries, she had to move Davis back inside. But yet you're seeing the work that Davis has put in to show off that versatility. She's now able to beat you off the bounce, even more so than she has. Teams know that she's going to try to take you off the bounce. I felt like a year ago she wanted to go right. This year it doesn't matter. She's able to take you left or right. There she got the step for the easy two. And you can tell by her size, too. She's six foot. And as Christy mentioned, maybe playing the three. Oh, good luck inside to Sexton from Grissett. That's, you know, playing out in the perimeter would be more comfortable. But Mia Davis is so used to mixing it up on the inside and scoring on those putbacks and scoring some tough points that that's how she's done things. And there she tries to grab that pass too hot to handle. First team in the American the last two seasons, averaged 19 points a game at 18 double-doubles last year. Went for 34 against Florida Gulf Coast last time. And if you followed Mia Davis' career, you just know that's a typical day at the ballpark for her. I mean, she is capable of putting <laughs> up so many points. The key, again, is can Temple take care of the ball? Because when they turn it over, that means Mia Davis is not getting a touch. <laughs> Pretty spin by Cook. I mean, the crazy thing is, Cook did this last year, but what I'm seeing this year is just another level to her because she's just playing so much more freely and confidently that she's almost taking it over. Like, I know I can take this go game over any moment. Maybe this is that moment. She's in the double figures now with 12. Well, anybody that plays South Carolina has to be aware of these kinds of runs. This is really an important possession for Temple as they try to milk out the clock for the rest of this quarter. 7-0 run right now for South Carolina. Zaya, the sophomore from Toledo, all-freshman team in the SEC last year, started all 33 games. Of course, you're familiar with the story for South Carolina, Boston, and Beal and Cook, the three freshmen, that tremendous recruiting class. They started all the games for South Carolina season ago as they won the SEC tournament title. Lisa Wesselick into the game right now for the Gamecocks, and the tie-up will give the ball to South Carolina with 2.4 to go in the quarter. Anderson across half courts. Throws it over the backboard, and that will do it for the first quarter. But a 7-0 run to close out the quarter for South Carolina. The game was tied at 14, but then Zaya Cook went to work, showing the dribble and the spin in the paint and taking it outside as well. And the fifth-ranked team of the country is up 7 on top after one, of course, of history women's college basketball on Tuesday night. Tara Vanderveer passing Pat Summit for number one on the all-time wins list. Of course, the team wanted to celebrate at Pacific on Tuesday night after the win, but of course, it's Tara Vanderveer. She wanted to keep coaching.
<laughs> if you want to know how you get 1,099 wins, you never stop coaching. So congratulations to Tara as she makes it to the top. 1099 over Pat Summit's 1098. I, I loved, I didn't know if it was a cape or a poncho or a pullover. You know, you talked about the fashionista. We asked Dawn <laughs> Staley about Tara's gift that she got from the team and uh, Dawn was very quick to say that, you know what, it was for comfort, not for style. But uh, your thoughts on one of the greats, you know, you were a great player and uh, you coached, and I'm sure you learned a few things from Tara Vanderveer Christie through the years, just watching from afar. I mean, she speaks and you learn something, and that's even what Dawn Staley said when I asked her about her the impact of Dawn. She said, you know, when I played on the Olympic team for her, I'd watch film with her. And she said it was amazing how she would just sit there and break the film down. And she would say, yeah, okay, now why did you do this? And I would say, and Dawn would give her response. And then she'd say, well, was there another way to do that? And Dawn said, ironically, when I became the head coach at Temple, she said I was sitting there talking to players, and I started having, like, Tarisms. I was speaking in the same language as Tar. She goes, I never even had an idea of the influence she'd had on me until those, th those kind of moments of coaching. Nice spin by me here, won't go down. Grissett has a second chance here for South Carolina and they'll reset to 20. Well, I thought it was interesting too, because Dawn made it clear she had no interest in being a coach. Obviously she played at an elite level for such a long time in the Naismith Hall of Fame as it will go the other way. Good job by Temple. But Dawn wasn't gonna be a coach. She wasn't thinking about being a coach until kind of sitting with Tara Vanderveer there a little bit in those film sessions you just talked about, and all of a sudden she's like, okay, <laughs> maybe I can do this. Maybe I want to do this. And now look what what, look what you've done, Tara. Look what you've <laughs> helped create here. One of the greats in the game right now. Well, you know, one thing about Tara is she's been at Stanford so long, and, and you know, you can see Dawn Staley doing the same thing here in South Carolina, like finishing her career here, the longevity of coaches, and that's the special thing about Tara. She has evolved with the times, you know, I asked her last summer, I was like, why did you go away from the triangle? She said, because the, the officials were letting them beat the crap out of my low post players. I had to do something <laughs> to protect my kids. So that's why I changed up the offense. And there's always a method to the madness, but coaches like Tara Vandermeer, coaches like Don Staley, you've got to evolve with the times. Gino, you know, you can't stay the same. And, you know, even talking about the adjustments Don and her staff made after the loss to Iowa State. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry, to NC State. She was very direct with them because that's the kind of relationship that Don has with her players. But she says it's all about teaching them. And Eric, I'm always a brief opponent. If you're a coach, you don't mind those early season losses because you get your team's attention so much more. It's clear. The things that you say now have extra poignance to it and they listen a little bit better. One minute into the second quarter, and there's the first point of the quarter. It comes from me here. She's got three. The run continues now for South Carolina. Eight nothing run for the Gamecocks. Go, go, go. Well, you mentioned too. You know, you learn so much from a loss and. And you asked her what they had learned since that NC State game as the three-pointer is off the mark. It wasn't anything that surprised Dawn in that game, it sounded like. You know, that they're young. They have captains, but they're young in terms of leadership. Of course, when you lose two great senior leaders like Kiki Herbert Harrigan and Ty Harris, who are also great players and top ten draft picks in the WNBA, that's going to be hard to replace but the, they're just a super nice team. There's no other side to them. And she has to be the one, Dawn Staley does, that has to ruffle feathers was the phrase she used. And she made a great analogy that hit perfect for me who grew up on 70s television and fans of 1970s TV can relate. Dawn said about this team, they love each other. They are sisters. They are like the Brady Bunch. They solve issues softly. Dawn said, we need good times. So if you know the show Good Times, that's tough love from Florida and James Evans. They're not Mike and Carol Brady. That's tough love at Good Times. That's Chicago tough love. So Dawn wants a little bit more of that tough love instead of the Brady Bunch stuff. Well, you know, I said this a number of times last year. Dawn just got to focus on X and O's with that team. Ty Harris, Kiki Herbert Harrigan, 
they ran the team. They ran the locker room. They were able to think for the players, on, especially these young players on the floor, get them to the right spot, get the ball where it needed to go. And so everyone looks at South Carolina preseason number one because, oh, you have all these players back. It's still a very different team. And just like all teams, this team needs time to evolve into their own identity. But that leadership piece is the one thing to keep an eye on for South Carolina because if they get that to where someone is the voice for Don and Don can just focus on the X and O's, look out because we know they have all the pieces to win a national championship. Zaya Cook with the push. That won't drop down and a rebound for Davis. Play will be Temple basketball looking for their first points of the second quarter. And Temple will take a timeout. We'll take it as well. 7.50 to go in this second quarter. Double digit lead now for South Carolina in Columbia. Well, just so you know, Christy Thomas Scuddy worked this into her contract that whenever <laughs> <laughs> we can talk about her beloved Crimson Tide, we do so. So the rankings as of this week, well, look in, look here. Alabama's number one. Th this is where I should just give the floor to you. Would you like to make the argument for anybody but Alabama right now to uh, make it to the championship? Well, I, mean, I think Notre this. Dame, look at obviously. Your support material. Hey, this is the thing. Alabama's played 10 SEC games at this point. They played this past weekend a game. It's kind of a knock against two teams who got to sit out as they wait for their championship game on Saturday as well. But, I mean, bottom line is I think it's going to be a great postseason in terms of football. But my hat goes off to every coach and player for the sacrifices they have made to just get to this point in the season. I'll tell you what, I mean, I know we know Nick Saban didn't make it to see all 10 games in person. But the fact that you see a college football team had played 10 games when you know all the problems. And, you know, we've been following college basketball here closely, and it seems every hour there's another game that – Gets taken off the schedule as Davis drives out of the timeout. Temple needed that one, their first points of the quarter. Great execution by Temple. Out of the timeout, set play called from the bench. Get the ball to your best player on the floor. Just cut into the South Carolina lead. Grissett on the post. Grissett drops inside for two. The evolution of Lily Grissett's game started off as a post player last season moved out to be more of a true perimeter player and then yet this year you're seeing that versatility she can go inside she can go out she showed that post game right there South Carolina answers right back to bring it back to single digits it was tied at 14 in the first quarter South Carolina closed the quarter on a 7-0 run and they have been in control since Me here trying to show off her range. Can't get it. And it's picked up by Temple. Clinton. Clinton working with Davis. And so Eric, that's the youth of Temple. The ball just stays in Clinton's hands. She's dribbling, dribbling, dribbling. There's no movement by anyone else. As the season progresses, I think Temple will be able to get in their offense quicker and they'll be able to move the ball side to side. Destiny Littleton into the game for South Carolina, part of pushing it forward and a foul called on Temple as Lily Grissett hit the deck. SEC Nation gets conference championship Saturday start at 10 a.m. Eastern, 9 Central with previews and a special look at the SEC championship game between Florida and Alabama. Crew is back at 6.30 Eastern, 5.30 Central to wrap up the afternoon matchups, get you set for the Gators and the Tide. After the game, head back to the SEC Network for a full breakdown, interviews with players and coaches, and you can always watch on the ESPN app if you're out and about because nobody covers the SEC like we do. Eric, that last call was on Davis, so something to take a look at. Right now, Tanya Cardoza is elected to leave her on the floor, but Temple can't afford for Davis to have to go to the bench. 
Davis with two personal fouls. Now you see the senior. Leading Temple so far with six points. Nia Russell for two. And that is one thing Dawn Staley said. She is so amazing off the on-ball screen. There you saw her clear the screen and then just elevate to knock it down. Russell, the only freshman on this year's roster. Of course, they had five on the roster last year from the freshman class. Coming off a good game against Iowa State at eight points in 11 minutes. And this foul goes against Temple. So this is the final non-conference game for Tanya Cardoza's team. Three non-conference games, and then they jump into play in the American. And this is the preseason coaches poll in the American. And what can you tell me that looks different about that coaches poll this year, Christy? You didn't know there was going to be a quiz here today, right? It's like something's missing. <laughs> oh, UConn's not much, at the top of the preseason to the poll. celebration for everybody who didn't have to put UConn on top of course the Huskies moving on to the Big East so South Florida who is always fighting at the top you know usually in the number two spot or UCF would be in the two spot in the preseason poll in recent memory South Florida the number one pick this is a Temple team that played well last year they were 16 and 15 and they had seven conference wins but as we've mentioned a couple of times now this is a young team not a very deep team only dressing eight here today in the timeout called here with 458 to go in the second quarter. Their next game will be their American opener against SMU before taking on Tulsa and hitting the road at Tulane and East Carolina before Central Florida on the 9th of January. But this is a short schedule for Temple, 23 game schedule. And this is the third and final non-conference game. And, and I had a coach tell me a couple weeks ago, it's hard to coach a young team it's so challenging to coach a young team during this pandemic season because the preseason shortened. They didn't have exhibition games. And so this is why I think, you know, it's a fair warning to everybody in the American that this Temple team's only going to get better with more and more games under their belt. But three, three games in and to go against one of the top teams in the country against South Carolina, it's a tough challenge for this Temple team, especially when Mia Davis picks up her third and has to go to the bench. And to – kind of pick up on a point you made a little earlier about these two teams having the last 10 days since their last game. I think both coaches were really happy to have some practice time that they really thought they needed it. And that includes South Carolina, even though they're coming off that win against Iowa State. So as Christy mentioned, Davis has picked up her third personal foul. Williamson with three personal fouls. So they're both on the bench now for the Temple Owls who are down by 14. Well, I think every coach, when it came to scheduling, just wanted games. And when you can, I mean, we saw it tonight with Tennessee traveling up to Indiana to play. It wasn't on the schedule initially, but coaches are looking to get as many games in as they can before the conference season begins. And so Don Staley said we had four games in eight days to start the season. We just needed a break in order to focus on ourselves. And, you know, I know players don't like to practice, but coaches, once you start playing games, they start keeping this list of, all right, we got to work on this, we got to work on that. And you can just tell that from a Temple perspective, I, I see the improvement. You know, right now it almost looks like South Carolina is a little bit rusty. They're not exactly fluid, but some of that is also, Don Staley's playing everyone right now. She is very fluid with the bench right now, trying to get players some minutes. Ten players have been on the court so far for Staley's team. Including the freshman, Anaya Russell, who has scored. Destiny Littleton has scored. Seven different scores for the Gamecocks so far. Closing in on four minutes to go now in the first half. That will drop in. Temple already with 12 turnovers. It's cost them as South Carolina has stretched it out to double figures. Mayo's got seven points for Temple. Knocked out of bounds by Grissett. It'll be Temple basketball. You mentioned Tennessee and Indiana getting a game on the schedule. It was added to the schedule Monday, of course. Tennessee was about ready to take on Texas in Austin on Sunday. That game was called off two hours before tip time. So Tennessee went home. They wanted a game. They got the game with Indiana, and they won the game over the 15th-ranked Hoosiers, 
58 earlier today. Renaya Davis had 19. Ray Burrell, who's off to a very good start for the Lady Vols this season, had 18 points. Foul called on South Carolina. Be the first foul on the Gamecocks here in this quarter. Another free throw coming. Before that happens, we tell you that we've made it to the final Saturday of the regular season in college football. This Saturday on SEC Network and the ESPN app, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. LSU shot Florida Saturday. They'll finish up their season against Ole Miss at Tiger Stadium. And the SEC Network alternate channel will have Missouri and Mississippi State. To find the SEC Network alternate channel in your area, go to secnetwork.com. Graves connects at the free throw line. The grad transfer from Elon has her first points of this matchup with South Carolina. Cook said the hot hand, not this time. Boston will head to the strike. You see Cook's able to get that shot off, and this is just a youthful thing by Temple. They just all turn and look at the rebound versus boxing out, and then Boston just goes free without being touched to get that offensive rebound and draw the foul. Now Russell in there mixing it up as well for South Carolina. So here is Aaliyah at the free throw line. Coming off season high 13 points, a season high 15 rebounds in that win against 23rd ranked Iowa State. 83-65 in the SEC Big 12 Challenge in Ames on December 6th. Mia Davis can just watch with the three fouls. Her team now down by 14. And Eric, we talked in the open about Zaya Cook's improvement from the NC State loss to the Iowa State win. But Henderson was just as spectacular in Ames. She was one for 13 against NC State, turned around and was four of seven, much more precise and much more, and just smarter about her shot selection for 12 points. Those are the things you're looking for. Sometimes in the early preseason when it's easy, you can develop some bad habits. I think that's what allowed South Carolina, some of those easy things that aren't fundamental, that's what was explored in the NC State game. How about the play by the freshman, Anaya Russell with the steal and then the score for South Carolina. I've been so impressed with her athleticism, just pure athleticism, gets out, and if she gets ahead of you, she's going to be really quick to catch. Russell's got five points off the bench for the Gamecocks. Alexander. Russell's got a rebound. And this is what's Back tough to Destiny Temple, Henderson right? running the point. Sorry, I was going to say, Temple's gone to almost a five out, but what's happening is you've got four players standing around watching, and so there's no chance of getting an offensive rebound. Well, also, Temple forced to play zone here with the foul trouble to Christie and Tanya Cardoza said we're not a zone team. South Carolina this, stretching it out now. And these are the first possessions of zone for Temple on the season. You're absolutely right. Had not played one possession of zone until tonight. Rejected by Saxton. That's her 11th block of the year. And a timeout being called here by South Carolina to make a substitution here as they continue to go deep into their bench. Well, Eric, this is last year's freshman of the year, Leah Boston, who last year did most of her damage in the paint, worked on extending her range this year, and you're seeing it from the three-point line and on that shot. And then Victoria Saxton just picks up where she left off last year. We talk a lot about the scoring of South Carolina, but I got to tell you, Saxton has been one of my favorites from day one. Gets in there, rebounds, and just protects the paint with her shot blocking ability. So with 119 to go, it's a 6 nothing run from South Carolina to go on top by 18. Coming up at halftime, we'll have an SEC update from Marty and McGee. We'll also have highlights and Christie's breakdown on what she saw in the first half.
Henderson calls for it and connects. High percentage three-point opportunity by Henderson because of Zaya Cook's dribble penetration that forces everybody to suck into the paint, leaving Henderson wide open at the three. Quick box out by Sexton and the foul called on Temple and Victoria Sexton will head to the free throw line to shoot two. South Carolina has outscored Temple 22-8 here in this quarter. Well, it's difficult to stop a team if you can't contain dribble penetration. Here's Zaya Cook just beats her player off the bounce and then just kicks it out to the wide open Henderson on the weak side. Olivia Thompson checked in after that last time out for South Carolina. So all 11 who dress tonight for South Carolina have played here in the first half. South Carolina back to that 1-3-1 one, one, half court zone. Batted down by Saxton and out of play. One thing you know South Carolina will bring, or else, is defense and <laughs> being very stingy on the defensive end right now, holding Temple to 30% shooting from the field. Hard contact and Zaya Cook goes down and Zaya will head to the free throw line to shoot a couple with 20 to go in the first half. Well, we know South Carolina is so good when they can get out in transitions. I cook with a little head fake to get by her defender and just earns the opportunity to get to the free throw line. So Cook at the stripe, trying to extend the South Carolina lead, free throw shooting in the early going hasn't been great for South Carolina shooting 61%. They did well against Iowa State at 77% helped them to that road victory. Final seconds first half. Alexander working with Graves. Can't get back out. Step back three-pointer on the way from Ayuso. So count that for the freshman. They'll take a look at the monitor, of course, but it was good for Temple. 44-25, though, South Carolina at halftime. Ever since it was a 14-14 tie, it's been all Carolina. Except for that one moment there at the end for Temple. That will be good. 44-25, our score at halftime. Halftime report coming up next. Three personal fouls on Mia Davis, who had six points, six rebounds, three on the offensive end, and those three personal fouls. Also three personal fouls for Alexa Williamson. Dawn Staley played all of her dress players in that first half. Cook leading the way with 12 points. Boston had eight. Ami here with six. Destiny Henderson had three assists. This was a very efficient South Carolina offense in the first half. They had 34 possessions. And they were scoreless in consecutive possessions only twice. They worked the lob out of the halftime break. Everything but the hoop. I saw that developing when the ball came to the weak side. Unfortunately, me here couldn't put it down. Davis back out there with the three, defended by Boston. Mayo on the run. Boston with the block. 
and hacking at it from behind and getting called for the foul is Jasha Clinton. Where it gets a subtle thing, but this just shows you the basketball IQ of Aaliyah Boston. Blocks it, doesn't try to knock it in the bleachers or anything else, but keeps it live, which allows South Carolina to get out and transition. Heads up play by the sophomore. Two blocks now for Boston, giving her six so far in the season. Ami here draws a crowd to determine the score in that crowd, and she does. Count it and the foul. Well, Tipples come out into a zone to start this half to protect their bigs who are in foul trouble. There, Ami here just seals off for that lob, and Alexander, I think, is the one who's going to get called for that foul. Well, Leticia and me here, her final two seasons of high school were each cut short by injury. Last year, she averaged four and a half points a game, four rebounds for South Carolina. She missed four while with Team Canada. But she looks to be, so far, and I know it's a small sample size, different player. We talked about the knee brace being gone, a little bit more of a bounce to her, and she could be an impact player for this South Carolina team. Well, it's already a transition for post players when you come to college. It's such a it was such a huge goal to get that knee back strong and more so than strong <laughs> to believe in it as Boston get yet another block. And Held the block to the last allows. second by <laughs> Zaya Cook. Bree Beal scores, but it was the two-hand block grab by Aaliyah Boston that started on the defensive end. It's just not fair. <laughs> <laughs> now another turnover for Temple. Ami here will glide in for two more. Timeout called by Temple. Great start to the quarter for South Carolina. 7-0 run to start the quarter. Welcome back to Colonial Life Arena where the block party is on full display by South Carolina. They have not let up on defense. Starting with Aaliyah Boston, just rips the ball from the shooter's defender, which once again allows South Carolina to get out and run in transition. And then you see Letitia Me here with the steal. And this is why I call her the point forward, because she can take it coast to coast for the easy two. Looking for the foul, too, didn't get it. Timeout was called by Temple to try to slow down this South Carolina run. You can see nationally so far, again, we're in the middle of December, but a good start for South Carolina when it, you take a look at the rebounding margin. They were plus 26 against Iowa State in that victory, and the blocks starting to pile up. They've got five so far, and we're early in the third quarter in Columbia. Well, Eric, it's one thing just to be taller and get a block, but this is where you're seeing the skill and just the basketball IQ of South Carolina. It's not for show. It's part of the defense. It's rim protection. They are not just only blocking and affecting shots. They're taking the ball away to allow their teammates to get out and transition and run. Well, Dawn Staley, I mean, she was so blunt after that North Carolina State loss that ended the 29-game winning streak. She said it's been a much-played quote, and, you know, Dawn answered a little of the criticism to it, saying, well, what I say to the media, I'm telling them in the locker room. This is nothing new. What I tell them I then come out and tell all of you. And the, the, the most telling line was that she said in 21 years, she never felt what she felt during the game, uncoachable, untamable, just not listening, just selfish play. It will open our eyes to see how we need to be and how we need to play every time we step on the floor. Uh, we've seen the defense. We've seen the rebounding. We've seen them taking advantage of turnovers. We've seen them push it quickly in transition, even off of make get the basket right back well and Eric as a former coach I always hated this last game before break because South Carolina Dawn is letting her players go after tonight's game they have a break until Christmas and it's always you wonder where's your where the heads at are they focused on this game are they focused on going home and if I'm Don Staley I'm very pleased with the effort and focus of her team here tonight well let me throw the ultimate change up slash knuckle curve slash you name your hard pitch to hit in the COVID era when you're sending kids home and they're going to be back Christmas Day, and we're, we're talking to a lot of coaches, like, you know, the kids have to go home. They have to be with their families. That, And I see in a normal year, that last day before Christmas break, 
that last game, sometimes you don't know, but you know, I think a lot of kids just want to see their families. They want to be around, and there's, there's obviously, you know, a lot to be thoughtful about when you go home and trying to stay safe and come back and being able to continue to play. But it's just such a different time now, Christy, with people going home now because they haven't been able to be around their families as much as they like. Here's what's ahead. Ole Miss will be on New Year's Eve, and as Christy mentioned, they're going home for Christmas break, and they'll come back to go back to work on Christmas Day. And I asked Dawn, is that normal that you would bring them back on Christmas Day? And she said, no, but because of the testing timeline and whatnot, right. because they have that game on the 31st, I needed to bring them back. But, Eric, to your point, you've got to let these kids go home. They have been on campus since July, and for a lot of them have not seen their family. And think about it. It used to be your parents would come to the games, and you could at least see them or have dinner with them after the game. And a lot of teams have nixed that because, again, you've kind of had your pseudo bubble to keep the kids safe. And so from a mental health perspective, these young athletes need the opportunity. That they need the break, plain and simple. Tossed into the corner. That three is off the mark. There's Davis fighting on the glass and gets the put back for two. If I'm an opposing coach of Mia Davis, I'm telling my players, every time a shot goes up, you must find her and drive her back because she does such a good job of weak side rebounding. Beal can't get it. Second chance here as Henderson works it back to Beal. And me here walked. Eric, we're seeing the full versatility of South Carolina here tonight. How many different players have we seen post up? You've seen Bill, you've seen Lily Grissett, you've seen Ami here, you've seen Boston, you've seen Saxton. And they've got such a great inside outside that you've got players who can both post up and knock it down from deep. It just puts pressure on opposing defenses. And being unselfish, too, nine of the 11 players have scored so far, and we're still early in the third quarter. Boston. Easy rebound for Cook. Well, this is where you can tell Temple hasn't worked a lot in the zone. Shot goes up, they're all turning. And so South Carolina has been able to feast on the offensive glass. And then Henderson knocks down a three over that zone. South Carolina is now 6 of 15 from outside the three-point line. Janiah Walker. Get it to drop and a rebound for Bree Beal. Quickly back the other way for Zaya Cook. Timeout called by Temple. We'll take it as well with 5.31 to go here in the third quarter and a clinic for the South Carolina Gamecocks right now. Up by 31. SEC football coming up on SEC Network, 3.30 Eastern, 2.30 Central. LSU shocked Florida last Saturday. They'll finish up their season against Ole Miss at Tiger Stadium. And then on the SEC alternate channel, you'll see Missouri and Mississippi State. Find the SEC Network alternate channel in your area. Go to secnetwork.com. Back home at 31-point game. South Carolina has outscored Temple 17-5 here in the third quarter. Up comfortably in Columbia, trying to improve to 5-1 and one on the season and set themselves up for the start of conference play coming up on New Year's Eve against Ole Miss. Temple has used their final timeout. We're still about midway through the third quarter. I think it was deflected. One official said it was South Carolina ball. They're going to have a conversation. I think it was deflected out of play, and it will be Temple ball with 16 to shoot. Quality teammate by the, uh, teammates by the officiating crew there.
Alexander. The South Carolina basketball. You know, I wonder now in the second half, especially with the bench, the ball in front of the bench and Tiny Cardoza, if she'll just try to slow it down the half court, just try to shorten this game. Boston, Beal, Amir, jumping up is Cook calling for it and burying a three. Temple has got to box out. They're just turning and thinking they're going to out jump the much taller South Carolina players. about Temple being shorthanded. Nia Matthews, freshman from Pennsylvania, out for the year with an injury. Shante Taylor, grad student who's actually from Columbia, South Carolina, Spring Valley High School. She's out with an injury. She's been battling injuries. So there's a couple of players that South Carolina doesn't have. And they've got players in foul trouble here tonight. Just trying to battle, trying to fight against the fifth-ranked team in the country. And Davis will go to the free throw line. Eleven points now for Davis. Went for 22 against Villanova, 34 against Florida Gulf Coast. Been a fixture in this Temple lineup, hasn't she, Christy? Started each game as a freshman, all freshman team in the American, and then first team each of the last two seasons. Top 10 on the all-time rebounding and scoring list as we head into this 2020-2021 season. Currently eighth rebounding, ninth scoring. Well, she's elevated her game each year. She's improved. I said earlier, she really just wanted to go right last year. And, I mean, to her credit, teams knew that, and she was still able to get to the rim. This year, she's equally adept at going left or right. Her range has been extended. She's more adept at knocking it down from deep. Just tonight, I mean, Bill has given her everything and more from a defensive perspective, making everything hard for Davis. Grissets draws the contact, and she'll go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. Now we've seen Bree Beal do that once or twice during her freshman year, right? Just get assigned somebody and lock down defensively. Now you see Bree. Beal's one of those players that can make you cry. And what I mean by that is <laughs> you, you, you could be you doing mean, everything right. Like but you, wait, wait, wait. Like if, if I'm walking out, getting ready for the game, or you're walking out, getting ready for a game, you're like, all right, who's going to guard me? Who's, oh, Bree Beal's guarding me? Like that, that means like you're going to cry, like you know you're not going to get your points probably. Let me tonight. put this in a way you would understand. She'd probably make me cry. You would start limping like you couldn't play because she would intimidate you. I mean, what <laughs> I meant by that is that oh she's my. just so fundamentally, and she takes such pride in the defense. Every yes. championship caliber team needs a player like that who hangs her hat on the defense. And I think Saxton's a very comparable player, especially from a post position that takes such pride on the defensive end. Saxton with the block back the other way, and Zaya Cook goes with it behind the back and threw it to the front row. Well, on cue, here is Victoria Saxon taking pride in the defense. Rim protector gets yet another block for South Carolina. And what does that allow them to do? Get out and run. And I thought Lily Grissett should have just taken that one up herself. Inside of three to go in the third. Winding down, down to three. Saxton pulls it away, and South Carolina looking to run off the miss. Henderson, Cook, got another one. 23 now for Zaya Cook. It's a new season high for her. Her career high is 27. They credit Henderson for pushing tempo, but Cook knows just get down, get to the deep corner wing area, and she just spots up for the easy three-point opportunity because no one can get out to her in time. Henderson with the steal and the score. 
Henderson just makes things look effortless. Ball's in her hand. She's so quick with the ball in her hand. Good contributor. Her first two years in a reserve role, now in a starting role for South Carolina. Really played well in the SEC tournament last year. All tournament team. The SEC tournament with the feed from Henderson to Boston. And there's your unselfish play. Henderson had the open look, and this is one thing every coach preaches. Can you give up a good look for a great look? Highest percentage shot is right at the rim, and she found Boston. Under 90 to go in the third. Walker drives the three, and it'll be South Carolina ball. Well, Cook is just locked in, 8 of 11 from the field, 5 of 7 from outside the three-point line. Easy when your point guard pushes tempo and makes the defense collapse. Cook spots up, and then Henderson gets in on the scoring action with a steal and conversion, and this is one of the most unselfless acts. Finds her post, waits for her to get there, feeds it by keeping it high. Boston turns and scores. Seven assists for Destiny Henderson. Destiny Littleton into the game for South Carolina. Saxton steps up and gets it to roll. Five points for Saxton, two for two from the floor. Melissa Wesselick back into the game for South Carolina. Eric, you got to credit Temple for their scheduling. You play Villanova, who's going to be in the upper part of the Big East, and then you go to Florida Gulf Coast, who's picked to win the A-Sun, and then we know the prowess of South Carolina and how they're picked to win the SEC. Now, there weren't a lot of opportunities for Temple with just three non-conference games to try to come up with a challenging schedule, but they've done so, obviously playing a city rival in Villanova, and as you mentioned, Florida Gulf Coast, trying to get them ready in a very short period of time for play in the American. Mayo takes it in for the basket and the foul on Wesselick. We've talked a lot about Davis, but Mayo has showed up today. The senior with the drive at the basket and just gets bumped for the and one. So Monty a chance to get into double figures here at the free throw line. She's had to play a lot. She's played all but two minutes in the first two games this season for Temple. She's got 10. And that will do it for the quarter, a good quarter for South Carolina. These coaches are fabulous mentors, teachers, and just tremendous women. And I, I mean, if you haven't watched the whiteboard, everyone needs to watch it. The sorority of these coaches, the friendship, the support they give one another, it's what every coach needs because coaching is hard. I've said it to you time and time again. No one really understands what coaches go through, especially right now during a pandemic. The stress of trying to keep their team safe and healthy, both mentally and physically, it's hard. And my hat goes off to every coach. We're set with the basket. Yeah. It, it, it is worth repeating that you're not just coaching well this offensive play here or what we're going to do defensively or individual instructional players you're coaching them well social distancing wearing the mask getting the testing that you have to go through in a regular period of time keeping those hands washed make sure it's 20 seconds i mean all these things that well maybe now for a lot of us they're second nature but when you're talking about 18 to 22 year old kids and you're trying to guarantee or try to guarantee that you're going to have as many games as possible in a season. That's a big part of it now, coaching your team in a pandemic to stay healthy. That is Saxton on the inside for two. Well, we talked about it earlier. 
South Carolina, Don said all but four of her players are going to go home for the break. And I know in my situation, I was always just nervous. Are my kids doing what they need to do? Are they working out? Are they staying safe and whatnot? Well, now you throw a pandemic on top of all of it. And I know a lot of coaches that I've talked to, they believe their students, their student athletes need this break, but it's also very stressful for them because you can't control everything when they go home. You can't control everything when they're on your campus, but you can only educate. And we saw it in football even when teams had the bye week and those football players went home. A lot of the teams, a lot of players came back, and unfortunately, whether it's contact tracing or positive cases, the teams would get shut down. And so you just hope that that's not the case during this holiday break. Well, I know the players who have been playing games, they, they are fortunate. I mean, I, I went back and counted it up. 29 teams in women's college basketball at the Division I level have not played a game this year. That includes the Ivy League, so the Ivy League's not playing this year. Two MEAC schools also deciding not to play this year. The Patriot League is playing a conference-only schedule starting in January, although Army and Navy has played a few non-conference games. So when you take those out of the mix, 19 teams still to play that plan to play this season. Those are 19 teams that have been in limbo. Those are 19 teams that have had games scheduled and have games taken away. So it... <laughs> When you think of it in those terms, there's teams that have not played games yet who are waiting to get out there right now. Well, and Dawn talked about it with her own players. There was such a focus about trying to finish what was taken away a year ago. A lot of unfinished business, per se, because of the end of the season, the way it happened due to the pandemic. And so for a lot of athletes, there's this heightened sense of focus to do everything right, as you mentioned, the hand washing, the social distance, the mask wearing. And again, Eric, when we were in school, we just, I mean, our biggest responsibilities was show up on time, whether it was practice or class. And now you add all these extra responsibilities to these young people. And it's the mental health part that you worry so much about the athletes. And so, yeah, to compete is their safe haven. To get on the court is what these young people want to do. And it's where they find joy and they find, their, they find some semblance of normalcy. Littleton finds an opening to the basket to score. It's a 50-point lead for South Carolina. South Carolina has made seven scoring runs here. They've had four 7-0 runs, a 9-0 run, a 10-0 run, and a 12-0 run so far in this game. I'd like to thank publicly Dan Ferran, our statistician tonight, because he's been updating that constantly, and he thinks I've been ignoring it. I think it's a great stat, Dan. Sexton inside. Well, Eric, I think we're seeing a little bit of the youth of Temple right now, unfortunately. Um, you've got to have some resiliency, especially when you're on the road. Things have not gone their way, but I think a little bit of fatigue as well. Um, they're smaller, um, player for player. They're not as long or quite as fast. They've had to work harder on defense, and I think that's catching up to them a little bit right now. But there's your All-American candidate who steps up and knocks <laughs> down the three. Mia Davis has her second three-pointer. She's got 17 points now. Correction, her first three-pointer, 17 points. Lost by Russell. Well, we mentioned earlier, Tennessee and Indiana have got a game together today, and Tennessee pulled it out 66-58. Auburn in the fourth quarter is on top of North Florida by seven. Georgia rolling in the third over Georgia State. And Vanderbilt with a win in Nashville over VCU. A nice move by Lee Lee Grissets for two. When, watch the spacing for South Carolina right now because you've got shooters on the floor that can space you out. They're getting free lanes to the rim because the Temple defenders aren't able to rotate in time. That's just really bad transition defense, unfortunately, for Temple. You've got to be able to stop ball. And as Christy mentioned earlier, Temple's used up the timeout, so there's no putting the brakes on things from the bench right now and trying to get people on the same page. Offensive foul called on Mia Davis. That's her fourth. Tanya Cardoza told us that she was hoping to see better communication on the floor from her team tonight. 
here, no one's communicating to one another. No one stops ball, and that just allows Russell to go coast to coast for the easy two. Yeah, tough spot for Kesha Yuso, the freshman there. Learning on the fly. The young backcourt especially. Saxton, pretty good catch there in traffic. To put it in for two. Well, Leah Boston commented on Saxon earlier this season and said, anything you throw her way, she catches. I'm not sure how, <laughs> but just tremendous hands. And <laughs> wasn't exactly the greatest pass by Lily Crisep, but Saxton bailed her out by snatching it and putting it in. Davis defended by Saxton, who stood her ground and then got the rebound. Crisep for Russell. Well, we're getting closer and closer to conference play, so I think maybe after this next time out, I want to pick your brain for what you see right now in the SEC. You know what the coaches said before the season started. Everybody's got an idea before the season starts, but once we play some games and you can see how teams look, I think you've seen enough to kind of handicap the top of the field going into conference play. I don't want to put you on seen the spot. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, no one watches more. I'm going to tell you right now. No one watches more film than Christy Thomas-Scuddy. She's broken it all down, and when we come back, she's going to give us her top four right now in the SEC as we get ready for conference play. You are on the spot and on the clock. Conference play is winding down. This was the SEC preseason poll. South Carolina, Kentucky, Texas A&M, Arkansas, one, two, three, four. So, Christy Thomas-Scuddy, are you going to shuffle those top four? In your top I, four right now? I am. I am. Oh, I'm let's saying see it. I'm going Talk down on a limb. Please. Big limb here with South Carolina one. Um, but I have Arkansas two, A&M three, and then Kentucky four. All right, let's go in order. There's no arguing with South Carolina after what we've seen against Iowa State and now against Temple. Uh, and they are on a mission, like you mentioned before. I think that is a big motivator for South Carolina after not getting a chance to play for a national championship last year. Arkansas up to number two. I know you're impressed with how they can score, and there's pretty good veteran play on that team as well. What do you like and most about the Razorbacks that has you up at number two? You've got a lot of veteran returning, and then you add Destiny Slocum, the former freshman of the year. Uh, I just think that's a well-rounded, balanced team. I think where Arkansas could have issues is matching up to a true low post up from an opponent um, because they're not as so, big, such as but Texas they want to look potentially Texas A&M, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> now, the team's but I, sandwiching on that pole right there. I do. I still believe there's some youth around the perimeter for Texas A&M that I'm not exactly 100% sold on yet. Again, sample size is still small in my defense on that one. Um, and Kentucky, you know, I go with them just because you got Ryan Howard. And obviously coaching, coaching change there. Uh, but Mississippi State is creeping right there. Could have been right up there in the top four. I think UGA, Russell, who's the, still undefeated. Russell, the dish to Littleton and the foul. Yeah, outside of your four there, and we know, you know, Kentucky, Ryan Howard didn't play the first couple of games. They've had the coaching change. Kyra Elsey is now, uh, the intern tag's been taken off, so she is now the permanent head coach for Kentucky. So they've got some clarity there with that situation in Lexington. But outside of that four, is there anybody, and I know you just dropped a couple of teams in there, but anybody who you're like, hmm, like Mississippi State or Georgia or Tennessee? Because when I think of those teams, I think of teams that have players who have played a lot of minutes in the SEC and they've been waiting for their chance to compete for the top four and compete for an SEC tournament title. So Mississippi State, why I didn't give them the benefit of the doubt in the top four is coaching change. Again, shortened preseason. I think that's a team that'll get it together. Unfortunately, had an early season loss to South Florida, a really good South Florida team. Yes. Um, UG, UGA, four of their five starters are fifth-year seniors. So again, a, a veteran-laden team. And Eric, if you notice, there's a theme with the with my picks, and that's veterans on the court that you're relying on because crazy times right now with COVID. You don't know stops and starts. Who's managing the locker room? It, it, you've got to stay diligent. You've got to stay focused, and that's why I give the edge to some of these veteran teams. Alabama's another very veteran-laden team who's also undefeated to this point in the season. Is there a dark horse? Maybe Alabama could be one of those teams, a team that maybe a lot of people would think would be in the 
bottom half of the standings that can make a run, that can piece things together. I think Alabama's got some kids who have played quite a bit of basketball, too. That's that's one that jumps to mind. Absolutely. I mean, that was going to be the one I would say is a dark horse. The way they finished the season last year, going to Texas A&M with a W, going to Mississippi State with that last-second win. Uh, some veteran players, and you've got a veteran point guard in Jordan Lewis. And so I think anytime you can have that kind of leadership, that's half the battle. Yeah, they did have a great close the last season, that's for sure. Try from the outside is in and out. And Wesselick's got a rebound, approaching two and a half minutes to go. Saxton. Saxton's got 15 points to go along with seven rebounds. And Victoria, seven of seven from the floor here tonight. Cook leading the way with 23. Boston with 14 and nine. Thompson will launch, and Wesselek was fouled. So the foul goes against Temple. Can I bring it back and have a couple of final disclaimer comments there, partner? Were you getting texted by some of your so-called friends in the conference saying, how could you leave me off this list, or how could you put that team there? Does that happen this quickly? You know me better than that. I turned my phone off before we started <laughs> this. <laughs> um, but no, one thing I was going to say is for any championship team, and, and you can look at all sports, they've got to have an edge. And you've got healthy first and foremost. And we know that takes on a whole new meaning in today's time. Sure does. But you've got to have an edge. And that's why I really believe that this South Carolina team can do some great things. I know that's not going out on a limb, but you hit on it earlier, the way the season ended, you know, there, I know Gamecock Nation believes they should have been given the trophy last year with the way it ended. They were number one at the time, obviously won the SEC regular season as well as a tournament championship. But I think if you can have that kind of fuel that helps you get through the hard times, that only helps you hopefully hold that, that trophy up. It was, and what we hope is April. Inside of two minutes to go, and the outside attempt from Thompson. Uh, we know at this point that March and April, if things stay on schedule, the tournament will be in Texas, it sounds like. It's not a done deal, but they are going to one site, much as they announced for the men's NCAA basketball tournament, they're going to do one site, one location. Everything that I've seen so far indicates that they're looking at San Antonio perhaps as a hub. You know, there's going to be some areas around San Antonio and in Texas where there are going to be games. But your thoughts on just having a one destination entire NCAA tournament? Well, I think first and foremost, let's have a tournament. And so whatever it takes to make that happen. And so I appreciate what the NCAA is trying to do. And, you know, I mean, everything's bigger in Texas. So why shouldn't the bubble be bigger in Texas? And so, <laughs> right. as you said, at multiple sites there. But I think it minimizes the travel for these teams. Hopefully it allows testing to be more efficient um, and uh, faster um, as, as, as well as correct. But I think you got to give these student athletes peace of mind to go and compete. And so I think that's what the bubble idea does. Saxton has it blocked out of play. And a little other bit of news too. Everyone's eligible this year. The waiver blanket transfer waiver for all was approved for this season Wednesday by the Division One Council. So if there was someone sitting out as a transfer, they're now eligible to play. And then there's that added element of everyone who's in this game right now can come back and play next year. You get, you get another year of eligibility. Thanks to everything we're going through with COVID-19. Another good defensive play for South Carolina. Well, Eric, to your first point, I mean, players who had, didn't think they were going to be able to play had suited up today. The announcement came out last night and they were suiting up and playing today. And to the, your second point about how everyone has an additional year of eligibility, it just goes back again of just how hard it is on coaches right now. How do you, I mean, some coaches have said, we're not gonna deal with that until the end of the season. Others have had that discussion, but it affects everything right now in recruiting in terms of roster management and how, how many players you're gonna have next year. How do you, I mean, these are still 18 to 22 year old women. And you know this, you're married. 
how do you keep that many women happy at one time when that roster potentially expands? Oh, I could write and players want to play. Russell at the free throw line. Final minute. South Carolina has hit the 100 point mark. Russell's in the double figures now with 10. Dawn Staley coaching South Carolina for a 13th season. Spent eight seasons as Temple's head coach. Established that program. Tanya Cardoza has kept it going with four trips to the NCAA tournament, seven 20 win seasons in her 13 years in Philadelphia. The two former teammates at the University of Virginia coaching against each other. And this will go to South Carolina and convincingly. Any of the issues that we saw against North Carolina State seem to be long forgotten right now as it's picked up by Thompson. That should close out the scoring for South Carolina. Nicolette Mayo will dribble it out. And that will do it. It'll be away from the two former teammates and current friends. Tanya Cardoza now will head into conference play, taking on SMU in the American opener. South Carolina will head into conference play, facing Ole Miss in the SEC opener on New Year's Eve. 103. 41 the final. Fifth ranked South Carolina wins it. We'll wrap it up in a moment. Well, impressive performance by South Carolina. It was a 14 14 game in the first quarter, but after that poor point in this game, Gamecocks just hit the gas and they never looked back. They outscored Temple 27 4 in the fourth quarter, put it away convincingly 103 41 the final. Zaya Cook leading the way for South Carolina. 23 points on 8 of 11 shooting. Five three-pointers for Cook. And she was in rhythm. She sprinted to the floor in transition, spotted up. And, I mean, you could tell she was on fire with the last one because she just didn't even watch it go in, turned around, and was sprinting down to the other end. And this shooter felt it tonight, filling it up from deep. Zaya came into the game, leading the team in scoring at 16 and a half points a game. She will raise that average as South Carolina raises their win total. They are now five and one on the season. Quick peek ahead here, Christy, for South Carolina as they get into conference play. Well, Ole Miss is five and zero oh in the season. That staff has retooled. They have practically a whole new starting five. Um, it'll be a challenge for South Carolina. I'm excited for that game. And then. At Alabama and Georgia back home January 7th through 4th, that matchup with Kentucky. Once again, our final score, South Carolina wins it 103-41 over Temple. For Christy thomas Scuddy and our entire crew, I am Eric Freed. That is all in Columbia. <laughs>